We are doing a webinar about resources, like electrical estimating resources. So physical tools, software, computers, um, groups online, in-person training, virtual training, you name it. And if we miss anything, be sure to, uh, I don't in the chat over on the right, be sure to mention other resources, maybe some resource that you use that you find really valuable, because I'm sure we don't know all of them, and, and we're always open to learn uh, what else is out there. Um, it's a good place for us to go sometimes as well to learn about what electrical estimators' needs might be or how things are changing. So today, uh, I have Brian Hoffelder with me, and he'll be leading. Actually, we're, we're kind of doing this one together. So, but you'll be leading quite a bit of it. <laughs> I'll definitely jump in. All right, all right, all right. So look at me. I'm already forgetting to to change change what you guys are seeing here. So let me let me give me one second while I. Do a little maintenance on my side. Okay, so there we are. It looks like I need to update my picture there, a little less facial hair. Um, oops. And let, let, we're gonna start off with computer hardware. Are you gonna change the screen so that move us yeah. down? Why not? That way you there can see, Perfect. see okay. the, the pretty artwork in our slideshow a little cleaner. Um, so let's start off with hardware, computers, monitors. Um, I'll start it off, and then, Brian, you feel free to add. So I think a lot of us work with two monitors now. I mean, so I guess if you're working off a, lap, a laptop and you are in and out of an office a lot, maybe taking your laptop with you, you don't think about two monitors quite as much. But I, Brian and I both feel, I'm speaking for you all of a sudden, that two monitors is a minimum if you're like a daily estimator or just any estimating really that you need to do the the benefits i'll let brian touch on the benefits a little bit more when it comes to electrical estimating are are definitely there in fact we have a lot of customers that have sometimes three i think we have a few that have like four or six like they have almost like a stock trader like they have one row of monitors and then a top row of monitors and we don't always like we bump into some customers that buy a TV and they think that the TV size of screen um, is better because it's more of like the size of a like a printed electrical plan. But from our experience, it with the software ability to zoom in and out of plan so easily and and being able to have multiple smaller screens has more, uh, I guess, value. And do you have anything to add to that, Brian? No, I agree. I, I do run into a lot of customers who kind of overdo it with the big monitors. They're great for a conference room or that kind of a thing. But for a desktop, you know, a couple of medium sized monitors, 27, 32 inches, great. And the third one is even, even better. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, what was I going to say about the big, I think some people like the bigger screen because they think it's maybe better for their eyesight if they don't have great eyesight for, uh, viewing screens, but I don't know, you could still get a 30 inch, 32 inch normal computer monitor and it, it'll work just fine. And you get multiple of them. Uh, let's see here. Not sure. We have a, we had someone chat something, but Vernon, I, I'm not sure what that's relative to at this point, but we can circle back on that. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, and Brian, you go ahead and. Yeah, another tool you should really have at your disposal. <clears throat> separate from your computer and all that, are so, uh, some way to measure and count electronically. Uh, the, the Scalex and the Scalemaster are the, the two most popular options, the only ones I know about there. But if you're going out to a job site, you need to go into the office next door and measure something or count something from a set of drawings, it's always good to have those available to you. They're relatively inexpensive, too. I think both of them are under $100. Yeah, and I didn't mention this up front, but... The description on this video on YouTube, once we get done with the live and this becomes a recording, we'll be adding a fairly lengthy description under this video with uh, URLs or website links to most of all of the resources that we talk about today. So it'll be easy for you to, to jump over to a website and shop or 
consider joining a group or whatever it is. You'll see. You'll see as we go through this. All right, let's jump over to software. One, oh yeah, okay. So, so we did get a comment here on that last one about um, monitor sizes or mo where'd it go? I, I agree. It's great for viewing plans. It's not great for actually doing your takeoff because um, when you try to move your mouse on a, a big giant monitor, you know, a, a little quarter inch move of your mouse may be six inches on the screen. So, you know, good for looking at them, but not for actually doing your digital counting and measuring. Uh, typically, you, you want a monitor that's right in front of you at a kind of a desktop size. I, okay, I, so I agree with you. I, of course, that's very subjective, too. I, I mean, I, I think that someone can get very used to how their mouse moves on a big screen. And heck, I think some people might get a big screen, but not use like the four k resolution of it and just use it at 1080p and then your mouse might move a little better or maybe some mice adjustment mice movement adjustment acceleration etc can can tweak things i don't know have you used a, a someone's setup like that recently brian I, I haven't recently not recently but i have several times mm -hmm. yeah but thank uh, you for the feedback uh, uh i don't know if it's ito 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 um yeah it, you can't go wrong. If you if you get multiple monitors or a big monitor, it's better than just having your laptop if that's yep. all you're used uh, working on. It, it it's definitely an improvement. Yeah, one one big one is great for viewing plans. All right. Now we'll move on to software, but feel free to chat about anything we've talked about. We're happy to go back. So go ahead, Brian. So electrical estimating software, obviously, you know, our, our program, electrical bid manager. Manager is the one we prefer and recommend. There's at least three other major programs out there that are very good quality too. We, we feel like we've got all the features you need, of course, and much easier to use. But you know, electrical estimating software is an absolute necessity for a, an estimator to be doing it manually, uh, or even just with a spreadsheet is 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 not an efficient uh, way to do things. So if you haven't looked into or got a estimating program design specifically for electrical that's something you you want to have as one of your tools of the trade yeah we have a lot of customers coming to us that have been have been doing it without estimating software and realize they need to be using some type of electrical estimating software um, some are doing maybe a little bit more residential work and wanting to do more of the commercial side or and but many of them are already doing commercial work and and they realize, oh, okay, we're taking way too much time. We're leaving way too many uh, potential errors. We're missing a lot of things. We're not counting things we should be counting. All right. Material pricing software, you know, that uh, again, that's one of our uh, main products is Epic, the electrical pricing. Uh, for contractors, we have a electronic price book called Epic. Uh, most customers get their prices updated once a week. There is another program out there. I'll just go ahead and say Tracer. Also been around for many years. Um, Epic will update all of the programs. I'm not sure what the status is with, with Tracer, but we, we do update other programs besides EBM, besides Electrical Bid Manager. And, and it's just a very convenient way to keep your prices up to date and also to have a basis of comparison. So you, you definitely want to have some kind of pricing software in your in your in your tool chest. Yeah, I don't think I have much to add to that one. Oh, of course. All right. Some plan takeoff. So there's a lot of a uh, programs out there for just viewing and doing your, your takeoff standalone electronically. Bluebeam is a very popular program uh, that you can use to view drawings in the, your, view your PDF drawings, but you can also do takeoff. You can measure, you can count. Uh, PlanSwift is the program we usually incorporate that integrates with Electrical Bid Manager. Same kind of a general feature, but the uh, same kind of general features, but the important thing about PlanSwift is that it's actually integrated to EBM. 
So when you're doing your counting and measuring, it's pulling those quantities and links into your estimate as you go. You don't ha you don't have to type them in separately. All right, and we I, I don't think you touched on this. Sorry, I was responding to some chat. The that Plan Swift integrates directly with our electrical bid manager. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we, we had someone ask about when our full cloud version of EBM will be released. And I, I told them I told them the first half of 2024 we'll have news. We'll we'll be talking about it. We we're not really at a point where we're talking about it yet, but it's just hold on, just hold on a little bit longer. <laughs> accounting software this one comes up our customers sometimes ask us about this they know that we don't offer accounting software but our um, sister company job power is they, their accounting software for a long time has targeted uh, contractors and they have a lot of electrical contractor customers and they what, what, what would you say they, they sort of fill in the gaps of what QuickBooks doesn't offer. That's one of their goals is to, to offer, um, I don't know, like I can't think of all the right terms, but the work in progress reporting that, you wanna fill in the blanks for me, Brian? Yeah, work in progress is definitely a big one that they do that QuickBooks really doesn't do very well. Um, in, in general, the job costing functionality of job power is, is better, more powerful than uh, QuickBooks. Uh, we do have a lot of customers who use QuickBooks. Uh, the bottom line for the estimator is having some way to compare your estimate to the results. Um, you know, at a bare minimum, you want to know if your hours come in uh, uh, at or under budget. Uh, but being able to break it down by phase or by cost code and being able to compare the different parts of the job to what your estimate was, uh, what you did in your estimate is really important to the estimator. You got to have that feedback. Otherwise you're just uh, pumping out numbers and having no idea where you're accurate or where, or even where you're competitive. And the, the also, I, I believe it offers a, a, what would you call it? Like union payroll, so, something that um, you familiar with that, Brian? Yep. Um, yeah. Union payroll is really not a, uh, something that QuickBooks does real well. Um, uh, and, and union payroll can be real complicated because of the benefits and all of the, mm. the, the payroll structure that can come into play with, uh, with payroll. Um, that's one of the strengths of, of job power over QuickBooks. Yeah, and, and job power, um, we're doing a webinar with them probably in December, I wanna say, uh, that we'll be kind of going over some of this in more detail. Um, about what, how we how we feel it would benefit our customers, uh, what they should look at and consider if they're using QuickBooks or maybe they're using something not even as functional as QuickBooks and they're looking at it and going, you know what, they're, we, we, we're missing stuff that we want to be able to do easier or do it all. What, what should we look at? And Job Power is one of them, which we, we haven't mentioned this is what, um, we did work with Job Power with a direct integration with our time and material billing manager. So for TNM work, it it's hard to beat uh, if you have Job Power and our TNM software. The the integration is direct. It, it's amazing. <laughs> it's probably our best integration that we've created, and we have in the works an export out of EBM. Uh, you, there's existing export templates that you can use inside of EBM to import into job power, but uh, for, uh, for job cast costing, I suppose. And uh, you know, g give job power a look and uh, you can learn a little bit more about that or wait until December when we do our webinar. Could be January. <laughs> All right, so we, of course we have to mention as an electrical estimator, you're, you're probably going to be taking a look at are using or have already been using Office, Microsoft Office, Word and Excel, especially Excel. Uh, maybe you're a Google person and you like uh, Google Sheets and Google Docs. I know we've been using them kind of interchangeably for a long time. We, we like the shareability of the uh, Google stuff a little better than the Microsoft. Um, I know a lot of electrical estimators 
start using they usually start oftentimes start with using excel and and word docs would that be correct brian yeah you know and also as far as an estimator again you need to have some kind of a uh, method of producing a proposal um, and again uh, the electrical bid manager proposals integrate with either word or with uh, 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 google doc to so you can edit your proposal and and that kind of thing but um, it's something you need to be proficient with as an estimator is at least a little bit of that spreadsheet excel uh, usage as well as where your word uh, documents that you produce with proposals and that kind of thing a little more than just what you do in an email obviously because so, a lot of the time you're going to be uh, presenting a proposal or that kind of uh, stuff that you need the word processing for mm -hmm. yeah and and brian and i were we're discussing the term word processing this week about well, is that is that still used do people still say that and we came to the conclusion that they do <laughs> but it, it's harder to find uh, it used on like Microsoft's website. It, it seems like document editing is is something they use more. Um, but we have a question here, or, 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 Brian, about Epic. Is it necessary to have Epic to use EBM? Was that the question you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course it's not, but it definitely would be almost, I wouldn't say foolish, but it'd be very uh, difficult not difficult but inefficient to, to do your own price updating it's, it's not only time consuming but it's something that you're going to make errors at you know using any kind of an estimating program without an estimating service i, th I think is, is a mistake because um, to, to do all that on your own is, is very time consuming and nothing else even if you do part of it on your own mm -hmm. you, if you have a pricing service you've got a, a point of comparison because maybe you're prices locally on some things or at least with the vendor you're working with are, are way out of line and you have you have no way of doing that or knowing that without comparing a lot of prices so uh, it, it's really good to have a pricing service to be accurate and to to make sure that you're getting good prices from whoever your vendors are uh, right same same thing with plan i think you know you don't have to have plan swift to use ebm you could do it manually i don't yeah. think we have sold an electrical bid manager program in the last few years without selling plan swift i mean everybody who's it's very few be, yeah. yeah i mean it's very few if you're going to be doing your estimating uh, uh, electronically with an estimating program it just makes sense to do the takeoff electronically as well i we were just at i think iec's uh it was iec or nika and um i think it was like a father-son company and the father still did the estimating and he he still wanted to use highlighters and, and the printed plans even yeah. though they had plan swift they had plan swift so maybe on some bids when someone else did the estimate they would use plan swift but <laughs> yeah okay so yeah and we have going back to brian's comments about epic we have we have customers that use epic to to price a job but are also then kind of manually updating pricing i mean we you should probably be doing that anyway if if you get a very particular price for maybe a wire or a conduit from your local supplier and you want to make sure that you have that price in your bid but oftentimes when you do that you'll probably notice that the price coming from epic is very close to what you're yep. you're using and and it it's it may be worth your time to check the price with your supplier but uh but yeah Everybody, everybody falls into a way of figuring out how how they want to um, update pricing in their their jobs, and uh, we found that we find that kind of interesting. On how everybody has a slightly different approach, but oftentimes they're using Epic with Electrical Bid Manager. All right, so I think we touched enough on Office and Google Drive or Google Docs and Sheets. Books and magazines. Magazines, you know, it's it's. It, I used to really enjoy getting all the trade magazines. I still do, um, but it, it they, they're going digital. They have been going digital for like a decade, probably. I just still have a hard time a little bit enjoying going through a a sixty page digital magazine. I, I know I'm coming around to it though. <laughs> <laughs> you can search for things, and I don't know. <laughs> so let's start off with some books. 
I think the Deca Labor Manual is a resource everybody, every electrical estimator should have at their disposal. Um, sometimes people think of this as a, a union publication, and it's really not. National Electrical Contractors Association, NECA is a uh, union uh, or organization, if you will, there who represents the U or management in negotiating with the various unions all over the country. But this labor manual that they've had out now for, I, I'm guessing it's 70 or 80 years, it's a very well-established labor manual, labor units. Uh, and but mostly it's going to be used for change orders. Um, and again, it's well recognized for that. It's also a great resource for things that you're not familiar with, maybe things that aren't in your estimating program, things that you haven't even ever installed. You can look it up in the NECA labor manual. Uh, I think if you go to the next page, there's a sample of it there, Derek. Yeah, sorry, I'm answering questions. Yeah, that's what, and it's about a 600 page book. It's got little illustrations and it's got labor units, labor units, not rates. So how long it takes to install something. That's the whole point of the NECA labor manual is to give you labor values, labor units on all the various items from your basic EMT all the way up to solar and just about every kind of uh, piece of equipment you could imagine. So it's a, it's a great resource. You don't have to be a NECA, man, a NECA member to purchase it, although NECA members get a discount when you purchase it online and you can purchase a hard copy or you can purchase the PDF version. All right. Another widely recognized uh, uh, book is the, the RS Means books. Now, they cover, I believe, most of the trades, including electrical. Um, and their books do have prices and labor. So they got material pricing and labor in some of their manuals. And again, they're pretty widely recognized, like uh, general contractors. Uh, you know, will sometimes require that the change orders uh, extras be done with NECA or RS means data. But again, it gives you a, an, an option or a, a, a resource to, to look at when you're not familiar with something or you need to present a change order to someone. You've got the, those books are, are valuable for that data. Yeah. Our, um... One of our viewers just mentioned that RS means is a bit higher than Nika. I'm not, I, I'm not sure about that. I, last time I looked, I thought they were actually a little bit lower in labor units, but I, I haven't looked at a RS means book lately. Um, oh, maybe it shifted. They're probably close. <laughs> yeah, I think they are generally pretty close. This is a old time uh, labor manual that uh, I've seen over the years called Durand. Um, kind of not, I wouldn't say obscure, but not nearly as common as Nika or uh, Means, but it, it's a good book. Um, I think you can get it in electronic format or printed format. Uh, this one is just the labor units. Kind of looks like the Nika labor manual. They've got different labor difficulties, uh, options, and that kind of thing. And it's pretty comprehensive. Not nearly as uh, comprehensive as the Nika Labor Manual, but it's uh, another good resource. And I don't think it's very expensive. Now, this might not seem obvious, but I, you know, I, 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 most of the estimators I've trained over the years keep one of these little uh, uglies uh, code uh, reference books you know, right by their desk because things come up when you're doing an estimate that you need to reference code issues for, you know, for the proper uh, size of wire for uh, uh, for voltage drop and that kind of thing. It's got all the formulas built in and it's a quick, easy way to get, to get code information that you may need to, to, to use for your estimate. Another estimating uh, book that's been out there for years is Mike Holtz. I, um, a lot of people know Mike Holt as um, the the uh, code, code doctor. Yeah, yeah, he does lots of webinars on on code all over the country. He's well recognized for that. Um, uh, goes all over the country doing code 
seminars and that kind of thing. But he also has done some publications in the estimating area, too. I think he tends to be a little more of the residential orientation, real basic stuff. But again, it's a good, uh, good book to look at. Magazines. We've listed the three of the top ones here. Uh, there's oftentimes estimating articles, but there's, of course, very, a lot of relevant information. Yeah, I think Electrical Contractor runs an estimating article, if not every month, close to that. Um, electrical Contractor, ECNM and Maintenance is another good resource for a lot of uh, technology and product information, new products, that kind of thing. Um, you may not know about Insights. That's the similar uh, to the Electrical Contractor, but it's published by the IEC, the Independent Electrical Contractors. So. Uh, again, it'll have lots of different technology and just general information on running an electrical business. Yeah, and the, all three of these, you can go to their website, and I'll, we'll, we'll be sure to include a link in the description on this video below um, shortly uh, to register, to sign up, to have it. I believe all three of them give you the option to have a physical magazine delivered to you. I believe so, yeah, or electronic or both. Yeah, yeah or both. And I usually sign up for both. Sometimes I just do digital now. It's I just sometimes miss that I forget that they have a digital release. Maybe I miss the email or something, and then I miss the magazine. Or I get the magazine and it sits on my desk, thinking I need to look at that, and then I don't. But <laughs> takeoff forms. This is just a quick example of one of the takeoff forms I use in the estimating fundamentals class I teach. And, and again, it's good to have just some kind of a basic form that you can use when you need to do a takeoff when you don't have a computer handy. And all it does is have a, you know, it's a columnar takeoff sheet. So you can put a symbol or, or a letter or that kind of thing on the first line there, a brief description below. And then you can put your measurements and counts down below it and you can just keep keep adding and we should go from one page to another or one part of the drawing to another and add them up at the end where appropriate. So um, it's just basically a uh, manual spreadsheet with uh, that you can use to, to do a manual takeoff on. Yeah, we'll include a link to a PDF of one if you're in, if you're curious. The blank. And I'm sure there's lots of them available yeah. online too. Uh, this is just a, a pretty basic one that I've used over the years. Online communities and resources. So there's a few here that are very, well, it, it, they're made up of electrical estimators that we've followed over the years. And you can get a lot of good feedback of what's going on in the industry, um, in, in the electrical estimating industry, what the pains are or what challenges they're, they're having across the nation. So if you're not already a member of these, uh, seek them out and join. They're, they're, they're free. Uh, they may have a few questions to make sure you qualify to join, but uh, just uh, I, I do have a, a browser open to uh, some of them here. So this is the one on LinkedIn, Electrical Estimators Forum, and there's some odd posts in there right now, but for the most part, it's all just a bunch of electrical estimators discussing estimating. Um, uh, Mark Candels actually, I think, manages this one. And I've always enjoyed that they use our graphics as their group um, header image. Watch them change it now. <laughs> and what, what else we have? We have some uh, Facebook groups, Electrical Estimating and Project Management. Another good one that's very active. These are very active. There's posts like every day. Um, and another one is Electrical Estimators on Facebook, which is uh, also run, I believe, by Candells. And... It's it's great. The, the amount of posting that happens on these is is it always surprises me. There's and well, it doesn't surprise me too much when there's I think like eight thousand members. Oh, six thousand members on this one. Two point six thousand on that one. I forget how many are in. Oh, twelve almost twelve thousand members on this one. Electrical estimators form on LinkedIn. So take a look at those and when you have time. I think that covered them all. Did I have one more listed? Oh, yeah, Electrical Estimator blog. I don't have that one in my browser right now to show, but it's, uh, what's his name again, Brian? 
who you, who is electrical that? estimators sure. blog the ec oh steve carr steve carr i almost yep. looked it up <laughs> steve carr i think steve carr is currently also doing the i think it's monthly i want to say it's monthly electrical. yeah he's been writing articles for electrical contractor for mm -hmm. years on every scope and phase you could think of for electrical estimating that's really his expertise yeah so in his blog right now i think most of the current stuff is sort of summarizing what his article is about in ec mag and putting a link to it and you might need to register to uh view the articles on ecmag.com but you can have a look at that we'll provide links or you could just google any of these and they'll they'll come up estimating services all right, Brian, you want to talk yourself up a little? So one of the hats I wear, in addition to doing training with Vision and and working in the product development areas, too, is I have a, a separate independent business for training and consulting uh, where we do estimates for customers. They don't have to be an EBM user, but they probably most of them that we do estimates are, are EBM users. That way we can send them the complete takeoff. They can put it into their program and review it and fine tune it and all that. Um, that's that's one of my other hats I wear. And we've also been working with Electrical Enlightenment recently, and we're we're doing a, a webinar with them next month. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to add a little there, Brian? Yeah, they're a relatively large <clears throat> um, estimating service. They do electrical and mechanical, but electrical is really their forte, and EBM is their software of choice. So uh, you know, th this is a big company. They can do any size job. My my consulting business, we can do pretty large jobs, but if you need a multi-million dollar job, um, something, and that's the thing about estimating services you want to keep in mind is something not only to help you when you're too busy, but also maybe to help you when you've got a bid that you maybe you're not comfortable with the type of job it is. Um, it's a lot of people do it just to get a second opinion, if you will. They'll have they'll hire an estimating service to 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 check their bid to make sure that they've got an accurate takeoff and all that. So. It's something that I don't think a lot of companies consider. You know, it's always nice to be able to do everything in house, but there are times when you're either too busy or maybe again not familiar with the kind of job, and you need a kind of a second opinion on it. Yeah. And there's there's others out there too, but yeah, there are. Uh, sorry, sorry, is... we didn't include you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is just a, and if you know, uh, if you use any, especially if they're uh, uh, using an electrical bid manager, uh, feel free to throw them in the chat or comments right. uh, later. Um, we're next, so next month is, if all goes well, we'll be, uh, Electrical Enlightenment will be joining us and kind of discussing the ins and outs of multiple things other than just outsourcing, estimating for jobs you need help with, but uh, we'll, we'll be discussing all sorts of estimating topics more on that to come so training you want to take so, this one yeah I'll talk, we mentioned mark candels before but you know he, he is also his, his company also does estimates but in addition to that they also offer a very comprehensive estimating training uh program where you it's it's all online uh, it's 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 you know it's a whole certification program from beginning to intermediate to you know to advanced training on est electrical estimating i do some of that my own and uh, again I, I teach an estimating fundamentals class but that's a one day class this is a whole series of courses that a uh, a beginning estimator can take or somebody who's looking for additional uh, intermediate or advanced training can do too so uh, Mark put a lot of time into preparing this program, and it's very comprehensive and um, real good uh, product for getting an estimator trained. Yeah, it, and it's um, it's over a hundred hours of on-demand video, and uh, you're, you're also, I believe, you're put into or you join a group online that you can interact with, and I you know, I think you also get some time with them one-on-one. -on -one. I I don't remember any. I think so. Yeah. They've changed their offering here and there to tweak it for to make it better. So take a look at that. Of course, Mike Holt. He he's, he also has an on-demand video program that where I think he's taken his old DVD. You, they used to shoot a bunch of video uh, for electrical estimating training and uh, 
sell them on DVD and they've moved it to, I believe now a portal online that you can subscribe to or pay to, to get access to. And, or you can also, you could get the DVDs instead. Here we have electrical enlightenment and you want to touch they on get, they off they offer training too you can, you can hire electrical enlightenment to train an estimator again you can also hire my company to do to train an estimator i do a fair amount of that um again it's it's always a challenge to how do you get your your one of your best electricians to train to do estimating and even if it's just to do change orders you know it's it's a valuable skill uh, project managers need to be estimators to some extent. So it, it's part of the uh, skill process as you move up from being just an electrician to a project manager and our estimator is, is learning the basics of, of estimating. And of course, local colleges and trade schools. Yep. They're, they're some of them offer electrical estimating classes um it's not maybe that easy to it's not like there's a list that you could just find that of those that offer it but if you look at your locals um it should be fairly easy to figure that out if they do do we, do we have a slide coming up on that mm -mm. about okay. colleges yeah um no your local resources mm. like for example most of the estimating training with NECA or IEC will be mm -hmm. through a local chapter. So you, you can go onto the national NECA or IEC website and you'll see some courses, but most of them are local. Even if they're online, they're offered through one of the local chapters. Um, I think that's membership resources here. Okay. Yeah, NECA offers in-person and virtual classes right. as well as yeah. IEC. Again, typically through a local chapter, mm -hmm. and and oh, that's funny. And um, ABC, I'm not exactly sure what what they offer from electrical estimating, but I know they offer a lot of resources. If you're not familiar with ABC, it's very similar to IEC. It's Associated Builders and Contractors. Now they're not just a electrical. Uh, trade association they do cover other trades but by far their biggest membership is a electrical contractor so in some areas you, if you don't have iec you you very well may have an abc chapter there mm -hmm. i know that's true here in california there's several uh, counties and areas where there is no iec chapter uh, orange county for example but there's a uh, an abc chapter that offers all kinds of uh, training and uh, education yeah there's i was just showing the nico website where they yeah. on, on their website we'll include a link to this they have an education calendar and but you can again see those are through local through chapters. Your, yeah local iec chapters or yeah, you just you do a little hunting but it's out there oh i forgot the abc there was abc <laughs> okay yeah trade shows we were just at NECA yeah, we, and IEC. Yeah, that's, the, both of them have uh, annual shows, national shows. Uh, ABC has some shows too. They're not nearly as uh, well attended, but the you know the National Electrical Contract Association has a national show that we were just at that had 380 exhibitors and about 6,000 attendees. So it, it was, was a real large show. Yeah, you're right. It was 10,000. 10, right. Normally they have six, yeah. but for some reason in Pennsylvania, they blow up to 10,000 people. Yep. Um, IEC is a much smaller show, um, but we do have a lot of members who are IEC members. So, so both of those shows are good for us to get out and see our customers and get their feedback and talk to new potential customers and all and that kind and of thing. And talk to new estimators. I mean, that's one of the, I guess, reasons why we wanted to mention trade shows. And you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, a lot of the people who come to the trade shows are, are thinking about being an estimator. So that's one of the chances we get to talk to them, tell them a little bit about, you know, uh, how to become an electrical estimator and some of the resources that are out there mm -hmm. for, for training and education. 
Yep, and I don't think you mentioned it, but like uh, you do some estimating fundamentals classes at the regional yeah. chapters. I think I did mention that. Okay, yeah. across the you U.S., probably... which is usually pretty well attended, and uh, you just need to reach out to your local chapter to see if they offer something like that or ask them if they would because we're always looking for other local chapters that are interested in bringing something like that in for their uh, membership. And again, some of the, the local... Uh, IEC, uh, MECA is the Massachusetts Electrical Contractor Association. There's that's uh, that's an annual trade show. There's one in Pennsylvania that's every other year, and there's another one in they call it the Upper Midwest Electrical Expo. That's up in Minnesota. That's every other year too. Same kind of an idea as the national trade shows, just in a little bit smaller, more regional format. So you, again, you'll get to see lots of new products. So you see software design for estimating and that kind of thing. Great way to basically keep current on technology as well, uh, including software. All right. And project lead sources. Just have a few of these listed here where, I don't know, you want to discuss it, Brian? Take, take this one. Uh, you can go ahead. That's right. I think something you. Yeah. So there's there's multiple websites out there on on the internet that um, where else would they be that have a database of new jobs that are available to bid on. Some of them you have to pay to become a member to see anything. Some of them you can kind of do some basic searching to get a feel for what they offer. Some of them have trials. Um, we'll list a few of them here and. We'll also, of course, link, put a link to them in the video description as soon as we can after this live. But there's quite a few. I, I don't know. We're not aware of any like top dog out there right now um, that uh, like resource online to go get jobs. Some of it might be regional, where you know uh, where you are. One service might work a lot better than another. Um, it's not the only resource you should use. To, to find work, of course, but should take you know and keep in mind too when you when you go to one of these public sources that you're potentially bidding against just about anybody and everybody out there. So um, maybe a, a, you might find a, a job that you're you know fits into your niche or your area of expertise or your size of job and things like that. But you know again, be be aware you're you're looking at jobs that are basically publicly listed. All right. All right. Well, and of course, we'd be, um, well, we have to mention our YouTube channel. We've been, we've been adding, I guess, we're, we do our best to create uh, learning or teaching videos um, that will help electrical estimators in different ways. You know, each each topic it's a little bit different. Some of them are kind of more fun topics where it's like the top seven or something, but others are more focused on specific uh, strategies, bidding strategies, or uh, certain functionalities. Even within our software, we'll discuss. Uh, so be sure to subscribe. I like this video. There's a subscribe button that you see right now. If you haven't already, hit the bell if you want to get uh, kind of more alerts on when we um, post new videos but uh, it, it helps us get our videos out in front of other people and it also helps you stay up to date you'll see our videos in your stream when we release them and get emails from youtube saying hey vision just released a new video uh, so that's a good resource we have i don't know 30 40 videos now and in fact we were just at uh nika i think it was a nika trade show in pennsylvania philadelphia I should say. And uh, someone came up to us and said that he loves the videos and gives them to his estimators, especially when he hires a new estimator to help get them kind of onboarded quicker. <laughs> it's like, wow, all right, that's great. Because um, they use electrical bid manager for their estimating. But most of our videos are good for any electrical estimator, no matter how they bid. I, I, I typically train at, at least several new EBM customers every week, and I, I don't think I've run into one who didn't at least mention it once, at least once that they've looked at our videos online and, and use those as a 
resource to kind of get familiar with things and start the training process. Yep. It makes you feel like a celebrity when people at trade show come up to you and say, Hey, I saw you on YouTube. It's like, yeah, yeah. you did. Good, good. So the time we're putting into this is, is there's people are getting something out of it. We love to hear that. Um, so we'll be, we'll, we'll stick around for a few more minutes. If you have any questions, uh, uh, please post them to the chat, but here's some of our contact information. And if you wanted to follow up, I know we had a couple of people with questions about, um, I don't know, material pricing, um, templates and whether plant swift integrates where, what versions of electrical bid manager plan swift integrates with, which the answer to that is all, all current versions, um, integrate. And I, I think as of this video, I, we, we uh, come to us with, to ask questions about plan swift and to purchase it because we sell it direct and we have a, a better price right now. So you, you definitely want to take advantage of that. And there are some steps you need to help with to, to turn on that integration. So, you know, definitely want to come to us to get that going as far as the plugins and the integration with PBM and all that. Yeah. Can't think of anything else. No, but if you think of any other resources um, and uh, feel free to comment under this video or if, I mean, I think you can only chat during the live, uh, the recording of this, you just need to post it, but please share because We'd love to kind of turn this video into a repository or a curated list of all the different resources for electrical estimators. And we'll be creating a blog post on our website that'll that'll also list all of the information. So you could always find it on our website. But once again, we will be posting or updating the description on this video. So under the video, there's a description and then there's a few sentences and you'll be able to click more and see a whole outline of what we covered today and all the links to go look at things. But feel free to Google away. All right, yep. Uh, let's see here. Wait, we do have a question. A few questions about Plan Swift. But the last one was about Mac M1, M2 processors. Yeah, unfortunately, the only way that you can use a Mac with an M1, M2 processor or M2 processor is to subscribe to a service like Microsoft. I think it's called Microsoft or Windows 365, which is really just a virtual Windows machine in the cloud. And you just, in your browser, you, re you click a link that you get from them and it you launch right into your Windows computer in the cloud and you're, you can just browse the internet, download our software, install our software, use our software from anywhere. Um, or V that, go ahead. That, that's for EBM plan Swift and Epic, right? right. right. Or V two cloud.com. The letter V is in Victor to the number cloud.com is uh, another service that we recommend that works really well. Um, pricing is pretty good on both of those. And that's really the best solution at this point, other than, you know, the, we're, we're actively working on making this, making it better for everybody and for Mac users too. Uh, so you can use our newer version of our software uh, just on your Mac without having to subscribe to a third party virtual machine in the, in the sky. But that's how most of our competitors do it too right now. And but we're looking at we're looking at moving to a native situation that'll just work and work as one would expect a cloud service to work. So stay tuned next year, 2024, for more information on that. I think that covers all the questions. If you have more questions, you know, uh, give us a call or email sales at visioninfosoft.com a question. Um, I see most of those emails as well. Otherwise, someone else will get get back to you uh, fairly quickly. We monitor that email address and uh, respond very quickly, the same day, same hour, typically, or less. And uh, so feel free to get a hold of us or comment on the video, and we'll, we'll, we get those alerts too, and we'll respond there under in the comment section. Thanks, Brian. I think we've covered everything right. here. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Have a great day. See you day. next month.